Uh, all right, so mu deck two. Uh, trying to infer uh, somatic variance. So variance uh, either in tumor samples or uh, I mean, there are other potential use cases for using uh, haplotype call, uh, sorry, for using mutex 2 such as, for example, calling mitochondrial, uh, variants in mitochondrial DNA, which is we, uh, we're going to have a practical on later. Um, so let's see. So the pipeline is uh, a lot different from haplotype caller. And it requires uh, uh, it requires a tumor normal pair. So you have a tumor sample, you have a matched normal from the same individual, and uh, it requires some other resources which we're going to talk about later. And the uh, and the mutec two call takes in these resources and outputs the unfiltered unfiltered variants, and then. We have some other additional computation which will help us to filter the variance later on, which we will uh, uh, pass on to the uh, the filter, the mutec two variant filtering tool, and finally we will have our uh, filtered uh, variants with that have high precision, high sensitivity. Okay, so what is the what is the uh, main hurdle of calling somatic variants? Uh, so the problem is that we have the overwhelming uh, overwhelming uh, noise to signal ratio because of the fact that there's actually not so many somatic variants uh, in regular cancer samples and the uh, but there is an overwhelming number of noise that comes from different artifacts such as uh, just misread bases or also possibly germline events that constitutes like thousands, hundred folds of the number of variants that you would expect to occur in a somatic samples. So the ratios of the actual um, somatic mutations to the artifacts and uh, germline events is like trying to find a needle in a, st uh, in a stack. It's really hard and you need to uh, make sure you, uh, you do your best at trying to get rid of all the possible artifacts and germline events that occur in your sample. And another problem that we're also going to discuss is potential uh, cross-sample contamination, which will also make variant discovery harder. And the reason why it's hard to distinguish the signal of the somatic variant from the uh, from the noise, unlike the case with the germline variant, you're you're trying to get things that are very low little fraction, right? So if you have a, you take a tumor sample and it's very heterogeneous, you might want to be able to call a variant that in like in in ten percent of population of your tumor sample. Uh, so sometimes you will find uh, find uh, be in a situation when you're like only looking at a few reads with your variant and you're not quite sure whether those uh, reads have artificial uh, uh, mutations or the, are those the real things. Okay, so first we can take care of the problem of having uh, the normal, the germline mutation in our tumor sample by, well, we have a normal, sam normal sample most, most of the time. 
uh, hopefully, and we can just subtract that signal from the tumor. Uh, so more or less straightforward. You have, you see, uh, you see uh, a signal for variant in the tumor. You look at the normal. If it's also there, we probably don't want to don't want to call it. But if if it's in a tumor, but not a normal, uh, we'll emit it. With respect to the uh, trying to get rid of the artifacts, we use what's what again we call panel of normals, which is different from the panel of normals that's in we call using uh, cut the number variation, and the and this panel of normals is just a VCF, and the way it's made is by Calling uh, by calling uh, a lot of normal samples using mutec two, and if we emit a variant, well, it must be an artifact because there's not supposed to be somatic variants in in a normal sample. So uh, we want to get rid of those artifactual sites that commonly occur. Uh, in our data from the tumor samples that we're going to call later. Right? So that, like, one of the biggest, most powerful tools we now have for uh, getting rid of uh, technical artifacts. However, that also might change in the future and be replaced with some other deep learning methods for uh, for doing that. Uh, okay, so the kind of meat of the MeTech two uh, is based. It 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 calls the same code that is in haplotype caller. It um, it also uses the same uh, assembly engine uh, and the same pair HMM, and the logic is 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 the same uh, as the one in in haplotype caller. We again start with uh, identifying active regions, and the well in this in the somatic case, it is different from the haplotype caller. Um, we have a little model that does does this stuff for us, so it's not the same. And we also, uh, the, I mean, the logic is different. We want to skip sites, for example, that are likely germline variants. We don't want to be assembling in the regions where we have germline mutations because this is, this is the expensive stuff, uh, ex expensive steps. So we want to only assemble regions where we are likely that there are variants. Um, and then we put on put in all the reads uh, in the uh, in our in our assembler assembly graph. We assemble it. We get the haplotypes, and then we get the same uh, the matrix of period likelihood given the haplotypes. And finally, we have a likelihood model for our. Uh, so now we don't really have genotypes. As we did in in, in, in germline case, we have the likelihoods of alleles that we have given the reads. Um, right. So what this gives us, what the haplotype engine gives us, is the same thing it gave us in the uh, the, the the things we discussed yesterday about the indel realignment, all that good stuff. So we are able to find. Uh, we are able to do local reassembly and clean up all of these uh, possible soft clip reads to show where the potential indels are. Uh, so this is a case of rather large deletion, uh, but usually we pick up most of the smaller ones. And yeah, the Habitat Caller Engine, this is, is what helps us. 
Yeah, one thing I guess to consider is that uh, some of the samples, for example, if you run mitochondrial DNA, uh, it used to it has a rather large depth, and so haplotype color, uh, so haplotype color engine has, ha had to be optimized in order for the assembler to not fall over of due to that size. Um, and so adjustment like that had to uh, constantly be made to improve the uh, adapt the uh, haplotype color to meet X2. Um, so then uh, once we are given uh, uh, the output of the pair uh, HMM, we have, well, so this is like, this is sort of a toy, uh, a toy likelihood. This is not what we actually use. This is just for demonstration. But the idea is that you can compute the uh, the likelihood of the refer uh, allele given all reads, and then you can compute the likelihood of there being uh, the alt allele, and then you can take the uh, the log uh, log ratio of those likelihoods and if it surpass, surpasses some threshold, then we will em emit it. Uh, in, uh, in reality, we have a, a more nice uh, uh, Bayesian model, uh, graphical model to uh, compute that, that uh, also, is able to it's 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 written so that we can out um, output polyolytic sites. So it does not just uh, have a likelihood model for for one allele. We we can in case we have multiple alleles, we 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 emit, emit variants for them. Oh. Um. Okay, so at this point, we should have gotten a VCEF with uh, the all the semantic variants we found. That uh, and the the paradigm is sort of still the same. We're trying to have a very high sensitivity. We're trying to find all the very all the potential variants there are, and then filter them later. And the way we do filtering is also based on um, um, the annotations that are is are output by uh, our uh, by mutec two, uh, and so here are different uh, different filters. And so the way it works now is actually is that um, so before we would use multiple multiple uh, filters with multiple thresholds to filter out the variants. Now there's a model that at the end it just produces one one number that gives you sort of the your final posterior belief that this variant is true or false. And then the tool optimizes number to maximize the F1 score. If you don't want to optimize the F1 score, you can also uh, there's a primer you can find to fine tune that, uh, fine tune your sensitivity basically to what your needs are. Um, yeah. Um, so there's there's multiple different filters, uh, such uh, so for example, one of the filters is whether the variant is due to cross sample contamination uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit uh, the filter that indicates whether the evidence is more biased towards one of the strands uh, and uh, another one that we have uh, a more sophisticated model for that's written specifically for this type of bias is the, the read orientation model when uh, the alt allele is biased towards either first or second in read pair. So that occurs a lot of uh, a lot in FFP samples. And uh, 
we have a special special uh, uh, dedicated part of the pipeline that deals with this. And if you don't have a FFP sample, uh, then it doesn't matter because it, it's not it's not it's not very expensive to to run it. It's 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 really cheap. Um, yeah. In 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 this lot. Oh. Oh yeah, I I I messed up. So base quality is just base quality. Uh, clustered events. Uh, so we. Uh, the the filtering tool basically takes advantage. Uh, it actually calls into the some of the CNV uh, code that we'll discuss later today to find uh, the segmentation of the like allele fraction. And the filtering tool takes advantage of that uh, to filter to filter variants based on which segments it belongs to. Uh, Sorry? Haplotype? Uh, oh, yeah. So I guess, well, because we have the output of the haplotype caller, uh, we, we know we, we get some of the phased variants. So if we filter uh, a variant on the, on the haplotype, then we are more likely to filter variant that's on the same haplotype. So, so like, it's evidence. <laughs> The fact that one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, variants is bad on the haplotype is evidence that the neighboring variant is bad. And so it, it was one of the earlier slides where we're looking at just the tumor versus normal uh, in one of the cases. Um, okay, so in some cases, another sample uh, will be sneak in in our data and uh, you want to be able to get rid of the we want to be able to uh, estimate the cross sample contamination. Uh, so basically, we have our tumor sample. Um, um, this this tool takes uh, it, it, it can take a tumoral normal pair or just tumor, and the basic idea is that we're going to look at. Um, at an alt uh, at the alt hum site, um, right? And we're gonna take uh, take a subset of all of the, of the alt hum sites that are found in our tumor, and those alt hum sites are uh, not very not super often found in the population. So if if it if if our sample is contaminated by some other sample, we don't expect uh, we don't expect the other sample to add too many alt uh, bases here. We expect it to add reference bases, 
And then once we have, so once we have those outsides, we can, uh, well, we know that those, those, those ref bases that are at those out hump sites, they either come from, well, they come from some sort of error, right? Some base error that we can uh, estimate or they come from contamination. And, uh, and then we have a model to basically, a, a, a statistical model to estimate those, those values and that at the end gives us estimation of the cross sample contamination. Um, yeah, that basically, and then, so this we actually use input to the previous, uh, to the filtering that I uh, discussed as one of the, as one of the annotations. Um, and here are some command lines for mutex2. Um, so here's the, uh, you pass a BAM, you pass interval list, you pass, uh, uh, you pass the, the pawn. So this is the, uh, this is the pawn, the pine alpha numbers that I discussed before. Uh, and this is one of the outputs to, that we use for the, their, the read orientation filter that we're going to use for the filtering tool. Um, and finally, we pass the germline resource uh, that has the that has only. Sorry, it must have allele specific frequencies, but bas so basically, it cites only VCF that has allele specific frequencies for uh, for for the for all sites. Um, then we learned the, the read orientation model that I discussed before using the output of the mutex2. Um, and in case, did, did anyone use mutex2 in a few, couple of months, in the last couple of months? Yeah, so that, there's, there was a little bit of change. So in case you're confused is because uh, there was a different, there was a tool to collect this uh, like a standalone tool to collect this, uh, these values. And now it's just part of mutex2 because we don't want to traverse the BAM twice. Save some uh, computation. Uh, then we, uh, then we, Run this to get pile up summaries. This is uh, this is what the this is what computes the, uh, the that's what serves as input to our contamination tool. We run it on normal and the tumor. You put it in the contamination tool uh, that will give us the the uh, estimate of our contamination. And finally, we put all of the stuff that we previously. Uh, learn into the filter mutex2. Um, let's see what else. Uh, this file segments the CSV, this automatic, is automatically emitted by mutex2. So in case you're running it locally, it will just be in the same directory. In case you're running it on uh, something like Terra, with one of the feature workflow, it will just automatically do it for you. But just so you know, that's where this file came from. Um, and yeah, this is it.